For the first time since the 08-09 season, the Clarkson Golden Knights got a win against Union College as Clarkson hung on to beat Union with a final of 2-1. to one. Friday night at Clarkson's Chill Arena, a sparse crowd on hand, much of it due to winter storm Nemo, which blasted most of the Northeast. It was Clarkson sophomore Sam Labreck opening the scoring at the Frenchies' forward time of the goal, 746 scoring on a wrister inside the left goal post. It was Bissett and McGinnity each on the assist for Clarkson. They led 1-0 after one. The goal of the Knights got a great save from Greg Lewis while on a power play, and then Al McPherson made Union pay for not taking advantage on the shorthanded opportunity. It was McPherson's seventh of the year. Sexton and Will Frederick each got assists for Clarkson on the goal at 6.38 of the second period. Clarkson led 2-0 after two. Greg Lewis was strong in the third with 12 third period saves. He survived a Josh Joris backhand goal after the Knights had killed off Union's third power play of the game. The Knights hung on for the victory with the win. It was their seventh overall and their sixth league win. They are now 6-6-3 six, six, in league play in a three-way tie for fifth place in ECAC hockey again. On Friday night at Chula Arena, it was the Golden Knights topping Union with a final of 2-1. to one. Clarkson hosts RPI Saturday night in Potsdam at Clarkson's Chula Arena. Front with Al McPherson and Greg Lewis. Now I'll start with you. Last week had a three-point week at home, and this team is starting to grow, starting to evolve. Talk about the confidence carried into tonight's game from last weekend. Um, like you said, three-point weekend is big for the team, and uh, uh, confidence is uh, sky high in practice uh, this week. And uh, as you can see, it kind of filtered over to tonight's game. We played a great team in Union, and I think um, we handled very nicely, and we came out on top. You go into this game facing the number two power play in the nation. Uh, they're coming in clicking 26%. I think PK starts in net. You know, a good goaltender is the best penalty killer. From your standpoint, what are you seeing today in their power play that was uh, that you guys were focusing on as a goaltender, making sure your your uh, you know, your reads were good tonight? Yeah, we uh, we talked about it a lot uh, throughout the week, and um, obviously we knew they could make plays, and uh, they we knew they were one of the top power plays. So uh, we just we were really aggressive on them and uh, try to force pucks and uh, try to get bouncing pucks and, and then have them just jump on Now they tried to pull, they, they were posting a guy in the high slot, I think it was 18 at one point, but uh, what, obviously not a normal power play, what, is, what challenge does that present for you as the goalie? You can't see where he's going with the puck sometimes. How hard is that to see? Well, uh, yeah, I guess that's my job to kind of fight through <laughs> traffic like that, but uh, that's something we do that they're going to push the guy right there, so we we're practicing it during practice and uh, we were ready for it. Yeah, I know we talked about with um, on, on your goal, team like Union on the man down, they take the risk, they get burned. You got a three on one going back the other way. Great decision to take the puck away from Sexton, by the way. And uh, <laughs> what did you see on that three on one? Um, first of all, I don't know. We kind of talked about it, and I kind of apologize to take it from him. But uh, uh, kind of went in, saw uh, Bertie drive fire post, and Benny wasn't quite opened up yet, so. I decided to fire five hole. I don't know if he was expecting it, clearly not, and it's like sneak through, so it worked out well. Okay, you know, one of the upperclassmen on this team, you know, Union's a team you guys have had some struggles with in the past. <laughs> End of the game, feel good? It felt great. I mean, I think that's the first time I've beat them since I've been here, so I mean, it's it's great. It's almost like a monkey leash off your back, and uh, we can feel like we can beat anybody in the league at now. That's the confidence we have right now, so. Okay, thanks guys. All right, we're back with Coach Jones. Coach, I'll start right away. You, you come in with a team like Union that's uh, that's a pretty skilled team, power play in the nation. One big focus was how do you stop a good power play, stay out of the box. Your team only took three penalties tonight. What, what did you talk about all week long about uh, you know, keeping some composure, but also in the penalty kill that was successful tonight? Well, you talk about it. You know, you, you could be successful on the power on a penalty kill if you're only killing three or four. You know, that's you know that's the recipe for success. And we did it tonight. We uh, we only had to kill three. You can see they're dangerous. They they uh, it's a different look than you normally see. Uh, but uh, they it's just a situation where you keep it. I thought 
Uh, the only disappointing part about our three penalties tonight, two were stick penalties, and the uh, you know on the other side of the red line, which we talked about extensively, uh, we're trying to play hard and disciplined as our uh, you know so it's always a, a catch twenty two, but you want to eliminate your stick penalties. Uh, those are the ones that really hurt you. But I thought the, thought the guys did a good job tonight. They didn't panic on a penalty kill. Uh, they got the puck into the middle guy. Uh, we've seen that in practice this week. We watched on video, uh, so there are no secrets to what to expect in terms of those situations. You need a couple of saves, and uh, Greg gave us that. Bob and I talked about the defensive composure. A lot of bend but not break tonight when you just put pressure on. Uh, what's that a function of so far this year? Well, just getting more. You know, what you have to do is you, you don't, you're not confident until you have success. You know, and the success comes with some of our guys are scoring goals now. We get some guys hot, so we have a little bit of a uh, little bit of swagger in terms of uh, when we get scoring chances and generating that. Uh, they, they're, they're actually good scoring chances now. We're we're putting pucks that were, were difficult to more difficult to defend. Uh, but it's the same thing with with closing out teams. Uh, that was important for us. To, uh, hey, it's great they scored that goal and, and got us a little closer and, and made the game that much more uh, that much tighter for us because it's it's great for your confidence to hold on and to take advantage and to close a team out. It's it's you know it can do nothing but help you. A lot of games this year where it's been tight games, either ties or one goal losses. I think that's starting to show its, itself now, where the team feels very comfortable late in the game. Do you agree with that? Well, yeah, it is. I'm losing a lot of weight, though, Josh. <laughs> it's just, that's college hockey. Look around the scores. It's unbelievable, uh, uh, the parity in college hockey. Uh, you know, and just a situation where it shows you that we're on the cusp, uh, but it shows you on any given night, if you're not prepared, you don't have that attitude to compete, that, uh, you know, you're going to end up in a short end of the stick. I thought it was, uh, you know, with that guy, I was really frustrated that, with three seconds left, our centerman that's on the ice doesn't get a chance to take the face off. But, you know, on, on the other end of things, other than that, it was a great night. Why was he removed from the circle? He said he warned him four times. That's what he uh, got in between my yelling at him at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Birch clearly said that uh, he was ready to drop the puck and the other centerman started complaining and he threw him out. Okay, well. <laughs> we thought actually we thought well, when we were talking about that we were talking about it was the guys that were coming in from both sides but there was teams there was enough purple in the circle besides white in the circle so we were confused but talk about the other thing too that we didn't know quite about Sexton hand passes the puck forward he doesn't touch it Union skates away from it if Union doesn't want to play with 14 seconds left why do the ref have to blow the whistle that is there is there a rule now or is it the ref's discretion that they've got to blow that whistle he, he says it's clearly in the rules for safety reasons that if no one wants to play the puck, that it, it goes to like it's a high stick or, or hand pass, whatever it is, it goes to back in your zone as if we played it. So as long as no one wants to play it, uh, it just goes for safety reasons. I didn't see anybody at risk there at that point in time. But, but that's the rule, so we had to live by it. It ends up in our zone in terms of that situation. All right, thanks, Gabe.